Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey guys. I'm running a little bit late today. Guys, I did something I absolutely never do. I overslept. That never happens. I actually got up at like three o'clock in the morning and I end up sleeping later than normal. So I am uh, in full effect now. I'm running, doing my thing now. All right, how is everyone? What's up, Mahogany? How you doing? Everybody good? This is Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. That's what this is, guys. I got some good stuff for you today. Uh, I am constantly talking to people about not being able to get good workers in their salon. Getting good workers is not an easy task, guys. So I don't want to downplay not getting workers, but it is something that the only way that we're going to be able to figure out what we need is we first have to figure out who we are. That's the first thing. So I wanted to talk more about because this this has been like a I don't know if it's a new tagline. You know how new how words are kind of new every now and again, and people want to say, okay, I, I need to I need to develop this culture. I need to get this culture together. And I've asked people, what is what is a culture? What is that? And believe it or not, a lot of people really don't know what it is. They 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 know in a roundabout way what it is but when it really comes to defining a culture and for those of you all i see some new names on here so for those of you all that are just you know first time watching me or you don't remember who i am i'm nikki smith this is knowledge by nikki with 1k and we are talking about salon stuff salon owner stuff and today i'm talking about salon business culture well thank you you look so pretty i thank you look i got i'm going to meet with uh an accountant and uh, i'm in a wealth building uh, group. So I'm meeting with some people about accounting and real estate and all that good stuff. So that's where I'm on my way to. So you see, I got my real glasses so I could see. My other glasses help me see too, but they're a little dark. But anyway, let's talk about a salon culture. Let, let's talk about that because this is something I need everyone that's an owner or whether, even if it's not a salon business, if you have employees and if you are trying to get people to understand what you need in your environment you're gonna have to follow a few steps okay so i'm gonna break down to you first of all what is a salon culture i'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about that and i'm going to talk about the the key elements that help develop a salon culture now let me show you where i'm getting this from see that that's my book i wrote it it's called salon marketing and branding and it has some really good stuff in it. I got about 12 books. And I mean, it's good information. So I'll talk to you about if you're interested in getting that later. But this is the first thing I need everybody to understand. When you want to develop a salon culture, the first thing you have to have is clear leadership. I mean the leadership. And I don't mean just somebody walking around giving orders and, and, and you know, letting everybody know that this is my shop. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about leading by example. Everyone in your shop should ha should be able to say that there's something about you, the leader, that they would aspire to be. Something. So let me break this down. Leadership. This is the first thing in developing a salon culture. Without leadership support, no amount of good intention or tech savvy will create a salon culture within a company. It's just a, a social culture within a company. It's not going to do it. To achieve this, you need either you need to work for an enlightened and progressive CEO. That just basically means you yourself actually need to be able to also have someone that can lead you or someone or somewhere where you get aspiration from as well. I have people that I go to when I actually want to know more about leadership, whether it's books, whether it's actual people, I have podcasts that I subscribe to. It's not always an actual person, but you have to have clear leadership. And let me say this, guys, I, no more this do what I do what I say and not what I do. It does not work. If you want people to really follow you and your example or or uh, uh, what it is that you say you stand for, you're going to have to demonstrate it. People are going, how many of us have walked into salons, even if we're salon owners ourselves, and if the owner is messy, the workers 
are messy for the most part now you always have a few that's not like that or if the owner is is really into helping you find that the workers are really into helping or whatever the owner generally represent if the owner is nasty because i didn't see some nasty shops i'm like really y'all if the owner is nasty and don't never clean up the rest of the shop is going to be nasty and never clean up because people aren't going to value what the leader doesn't value this is something that is very very important if the owner is 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 talking about stuff that really shouldn't be discussed in a salon the rest of the salon is going to talk about stuff that shouldn't be discussed in a salon leadership is the first thing that becomes totally crucial to establishing a because a culture is really a social dynamic it's really a group of people that come together that express some type of social idea or social position that's what it is they are they don't have to be clones of each other everybody don't have to do hair the same everybody don't have to be exactly the same personality but they will have something very similar about them in a working culture they will or they won't fit it won't fit okay let me give you the second thing mission statement long neglected in dusty pages of annual reports mission statements must now become the new dynamic i mean to the point where if you gotta print them out and put them on the wall so not only do your workers know but the clients also know this is what we're about this is our objective here okay it must become the new dynamic and inspiring documents that ring true in terms of the ex of the experience of the employees at work you have to be clear with letting people know that our mission here is this period this is what we're doing here and this has to be conveyed in interviews in meetings you got to remind people this is what we're about here this is our mission let me tell you i remember when i was still owning salons and i even had clients my mission was so strong my clients would tell people if they if they were new and they did something my clients would say we don't do that here they would check them we don't we don't do that here that's not what we're about here even the clients knew what the mission was and they, so what it would end up happening is people that didn't fit they would end up falling off you wouldn't see them anymore which was fine okay you got to create this then next you have policy in addition in addition to the ceo example or the leadership example employees must be given a clear guidance as to what they can say on behalf of the company employees need to know their position what they can say what they can't say they need to know where their authority starts and where it ends and this is something that is not that hard to do but you have to establish it for your business and you have to convey it to the people that work for you by the way everybody that's on the video i learned a new trick it's wonderful i want everybody that watches me and believes in what i'm talking about hit the share button and share it with any groups that you're a part of that you think would benefit from what I'm saying. Do that right now for me, please. Everybody that's on the video, hit share and then hit share to all the groups that you have that you know will benefit from this information. Okay? Then we have roles. What are the roles? See, this is where I also find some uh, disconnect with the businesses is that people don't clearly know where their roles are. They don't know what they what they are supposed to be doing what they aren't supposed to be doing and this is the fault of the leader for not establishing and i mean if you got to put it on paper you have to establish what the role so let me read under roles becoming a social business requires reframing that means you may even have to go back to the table sometime of the roles of individuals within the company and the dynamics that operate between between them gone are the days of social media outreach wait I, look i may have to pull over gone are the days when social media outreach is the sole responsibility of the fresh face 20 something in the corner the entire organization must be allowed to participate in ways of their choosing that means if you even have a social media campaign it's just using this as an example you have to even tell people okay this is what we're going to do your role is going to be, you're going to put the pictures on social media, you're going to blast this day, 
you're gonna do this this day, whatever it is. This is just using social media, but it's really a great way to say it's not one person's responsibility to do everything for the salon. And in a booth rental environment, everyone should be doing things that benefit the salon as well as themselves. Everybody can be participating, but the leader has to quarterback this. They have to quarterback what's gonna happen. Okay, let me keep going. Statement of values. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. I don't care who you are. Your workers, your booth renters, your commission workers, your hourly workers, salary, however you got people in your shop working, you all have to share a very similar value system or it is not going to work at all. So let me, let me say what that is, statement of values. Beyond the mission statement, this is deeper than just the mission. These are the core beliefs that are transcended from the owner, period. Beyond the mission statement, leadership must encourage productive culture by bringing the core values of the brand. I also have a lot in this book about what is a brand. You gotta know what that is. To life for the employees in a social business world a hierarchy and dictatorial dynamics simply will not work that means you just can't have this i'm the boss do what i say base that's what that means that's just a nice way to put it simply will not work if you're trying to attract new and good talent it's not gonna work you can't just walk around talk about i'm the boss and you do it or you can't work here you gotta bounce that's not gonna work you're going to have to have some really core values. Let me give you an idea of some values. I have never, ever, anybody that knows me knows that I hate drama. I don't do drama. I don't participate in drama. I ain't going to let you sit in my chair and talk about stuff that I don't think is right. I will tell you in a minute. We ain't going to talk about that. We're going to pray for them. That ain't our business. We're going to leave that alone. Yes, I will. I don't do it. And I don't allow it. To happen if I hear something being discussed in my place of business, see, because they you can't control what people whisper. But if I hear something being discussed, ah, we don't do that here. We don't talk. You can shut that stuff down. Shut it down. I have seen many things that were not productive and were awful come out of chitter chatter openly in a salon with people talking about stuff that they ain't got no business talking about. But you, as the leader, you have a right. And if your value system is, that is not what we're about here. We, if it's somebody that needs some help, we're going to pray for them. Or we going to, how about this? We're going to get together and help them then. That's what we're going to do. That's how we roll here. Okay? You can determine how far that goes just simply by you making a decision on what your value system is and then transcending that to your people. That's how you do it. That's literally how you do it. Everybody that just joined on, hit your share button. Share this message with all of the groups that you think need this message. That's what I need you to do right now, okay? So that's about statement of your core values. That isn't, that isn't just something that you say. That's something that people need to see. That is something you can't, you can't hide. You can't lie about. You could say one thing, but if people see another, they're going to know that's not really what you value. If you're a person that values giving, me and my husband are true givers. If you're a person that values giving, it's okay to let people see. And I'm a, my husband gives openly. I give more discreetly. But there are times when I felt the need to let people know what's okay. You know, people come in the shop, we know everything that's going on in their lives, good and bad. And there's been many times that I have done this back, especially when I had receptionists that worked for me, where I have actually, I knew a woman was going through stuff, husband, kids, job, cancer, whatever. And God will put on my heart that when she goes up to the front or if I'm checking her out, I will give her a gift card for five or $600 to basically take care of her hair for a certain stint of time and, and be all right with it. And I have... I don't typically do it publicly, but sometimes I do like to show other people that this is what it's about. You know somebody's going through, God has put on your heart, look, I'm going to let you have this. Five, six hundred dollar gift certificate, it's on me today. 
and then you can use this for your next couple visits. If this is what you're about, you will find that you will have more people if they value what you value, you will have more people in your salon that will actually be more uh, uh, prone to be that way as opposed to opposing it. So these are things that you have to let them know in the door. And this is also where you can let people know if you have a person that you think is in their position and maybe this is a commission setting and you want to go to the owner and say, this is where you have to let them know where their authority is though. They want to say, you know what? This lady over here has got X, Y, Z. Is it possible? I'll even take a hit and let her have my part today. Let me give you an example of a culture that I thought was phenomenal. I read the book by Simon Sinek, excellent book called Leaders Eat Last. Excellent book, okay? So for those of y'all that read, get it. Simon Sinek, Leaders Eat Last. What it talked about, I don't remember the name of the company, but he was talking about cultures of a company. He said there was a really large company back 20, 30 years ago that uh, was in need of downsizing. They needed to downsize, cut millions of dollars, but they, the owner of the company, who was an awesome leader, what he decided to do, which is unlike what other companies do, they want to cut people at the bottom. No, he said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have where everybody from the top to the bottom has 30 furlough days for the year. 30. That means I don't care if you make it $2 million a year, you're going to give up 30 days of your, of your um, business or 30 days of your salary, and so is everybody else. Because instead of us firing people, we're going to make everybody feel it a little instead of making some feel it a lot. So what it talked about, the culture of this business was so great that what people did collectively amongst themselves, the people actually, those that were in better positions than others, went to each other and said, you know what? I know you got small kids. I know you taking care of your mother. I know you got X, Y, Z going on. I'm going to give up 35 days so you can give up 25. This is what happened in this company. I you have to read the book. I can't remember the name of the company. That culture was established because the leader of the company said that I'm not just going to pick on people on the bottom. I want everybody to win or everybody to lose a little. So I'm going to, he had established a culture where people were willing to help each other out and say, you take 40, I do 40 days, so you only got to do 20. Okay? That is stuff that can only come from the top. Period. But his sense of value about everybody getting their just due was clear all the way through this whole cycle. I think they said it took them only about maybe a year to cure up millions of dollars worth of debt because the people at the company were willing to give up what they needed to give up so everybody can still keep a job, okay? This is something that's absolutely necessary. So your value system, you can't fake it, y'all. If you value something, people gonna know it, okay? Then we talk about rewards. I will read this. This is in my book, Salon Marketing and Branding. As, spokes by, as spokesmen and women for a brand, employees are sharing the ownership of the brand and its, and its story, similar to what we just talked about. Those who, who, those who do this successfully should be recognized and awarded to encourage the culture of the social savvy employees. That means as a leader, even in a booth rental environment, if you don't do nothing but give a reward away to somebody who on time every day, you on time every day, I'm going to give you a, a free dinner or if they like movies. And this is something I want you all to, to do. If you decide to come up with a reward system to reward your employees for the most clients in a month, for uh, being on time every day, I don't care what it is. When you reward them, reward them with something that's about them. I can't tell you how special it is when a leader gives you something that you know they thought about you when they gave it to you. For instance, people give me Starbucks gift certificates. They know I love Starbucks and I love movies. So ain't no need of you giving me no general gift certificate about because that's just general. That's something you would give to anybody. No, they actually will give me what they know I'm into, Starbucks and movies. I remember I, I, I was, uh, I think I was... I owned at this time. I had to think about it. I had a client 
that bought me a Christmas present. Now, they used to always, you know, they give you money for Christmas or they slide you gifts, whatever it is. This client bought me something that brought tears to my eyes. This is what I mean when I say you reward people with things that you know matter to them. At the time, I, drank, I ate hot sauce like crazy. I mean, like ridiculous. I ate so much hot sauce, it was just ridiculous. She, I drank Pepsi like water and all I ate was licorice all day. She bought me a gallon of hot sauce she bought me a case of Pepsi, and she bought me a four-pound tub of licorice. Do y'all know how excited I was? That meant more to me than somebody who could have bought me something that even cost more, but it wasn't anything that said me. I was so moved by that. I mean, I was moved. I couldn't even explain. I was like, oh, my God, that was just the best gift ever because I know she thought about me. So when you decide, if you decide to have rewards programs for your people, which you got, you should, you need to encourage them to do better. If you give somebody something for being on time, then the ones that's later be like, okay, I got to get it together because she giving stuff away for being on time. I ain't never on time. Okay. So this is what you got to do. Then we talk about contribution. Okay. So that's, that's about that. Then we talk about contribution. Contribution is just as important. Employees as to customers. Let me, hold on, let me read this. Uh, I'm reading the wrong thing here. It is just as important to employees as to customers that the brand demonstrates authenticity. Do we even know what that is, guys? Do we know what authenticity is? How many times do you meet people or you hear people and then you meet them and they ain't nothing like what you heard, okay? Authenticity commitment to its stated values that means the things that you preach to people you got to live it okay more than that employees will readily volunteer to participate in such efforts because it makes their employment more meaningful that means if you're big on con your contribution your sense of commitment your sense of giving and what it is that you do if you are authentic in this, you ain't doing it just for the money, you ain't doing it just for accolades, you will be amazed at how many people, when this is really you, will say, you know what, I'll help, I'll come. I even got it so where my clients, when I was owning and even still now, I just do two days a week. Do you know my clients, and I don't even tell them to, will sweep their own hair up? Or if somebody else is busy, clients will get up and pick up a broom in a minute and sweep up hair. And, and if I got boxes delivered, they'll open packages. Them jokers fold towels. They do everything because this is the environment. My contribution even to them and things that they do make them want to help me in any way possible. Because I've contributed to everything that they do because I'm a natural giver. It's, it's, it's truly authentic. It's who I am. This is contagious. This is an infectious behavior. So when you are a contributor, you will find that everyone around you, they'll catch the fever. They really will. Okay? And then last but not least, these are the things that we're doing to help establish a salon culture. So I've given you enough to think about. Measurement. There has to be a way, and I'm going to read this. As with any marketing effort, it is critical to measure the engagement levels of your employees and the effectiveness that it has on the brand reputation. Consumer sentiment and sales. That means you got to track this. How much does what you do in your value system, how much does that actually help produce in the business? How much do people actually volunteer? How much more well beyond what they have to do are they willing to do? You need to be able to measure this, okay? Only by defining the right metric, that means the right system of how you're going to measure this, can you manage the effectiveness of employee efforts and transform your whole organization into a marketing department. That simply means, now these are all, I got it all in here, guys, and look, I got all how to retain clients, uh, I got, oh, I got all kind of stuff in here, I got a whole marketing tips, you see this, I got a whole bunch of marketing tips, I got, these are things that go along with your culture. You see, I got branding information. So I got everything on about how to create a brand, how to protect the brand, all that good stuff. But it has to start at the top, guys. What this Facebook Live was about is that your business and what you do and what you gain, it has to start with you. And you have to learn or figure out 
how to vet the people out that are about what you're about. They are out there, guys. I'm telling you. I know you all saying I can't find people. Yes, you can. But you have to be able to attract them to you based off of your values. You have to be able to do that. And let me give you one tip. This is something I do salon assessments. I come in and I fix jacked up salons and I, I do all of this for you. People pay me to come in and create help create this for you. So if any of you all are interested in that, all you got to do is just uh, direct message me. That's not on my website. How can you get this book? I will have all this on my website Sunday. Remember Sunday. Go on Sunday. When y'all get up, go on your website. Go on Knowledge by Nikki with 1K.com on Sunday. You'll be able to buy every single one of these books. Every single one of them. Okay? But this, is, and they're all, they're $100. Every single one of them are $100. I got, I don't know how many of them. I got a lot of them. So Knowledge by Nikki with 1K.com. Saturday when you get through work, it'll actually be up Saturday. When you get through work on Saturday, or if you get a break, go on. I'll have all the books, all the classes, everything. But, guys, this is something that's very, very... Oh, what I was going to say I want to give you all. Why do we not have open houses? That's what salons need to have. If you want to start attracting people to your facility, have an open house. Just like a, a building, just like a regular house, have an open house. Have a an occasion where people come in they just see and learn what you're about because i'm telling you i'm all over the country and people are always looking for somewhere to work i got workers that like i don't have nowhere to go to find nowhere that's about what i'm about i got owners that say they can't find people it's just a matter of us putting some marketing feelers out there to make the connection we got to make the connection do an open house put a big banner up open house anyone interested in new employment open house come and let's let's talk about what my business is about people may just want to change they may not be mad at where they are you have people working in their home they want to come out these are things you have to do and then last but not least I'm gonna give you this you have to have when you actually sit down now this is a much bigger book this is called paper makes permanent this is a whole book of salon contracts contracts for the employees contracts for services contracts for everything it's called paper see that it's called paper makes permanent and what it actually has in it is an interviewing criteria for you okay and i'll just go through some of the questions why did you choose this salon why why are you here you need to know why 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 over here is it because it's close to your house is it you need to fill people out it also asks what are your one three and five year goals you need to know this so you know if a person is aspiring to be an owner, if a person wants to open a school, and you need to be open with them. Those of you all that watch me regularly have heard me say this. You need to let them know whatever it is they want to do, it is okay. It is absolutely okay. You need to let them know that. If you want to be an owner, I'll tell you what. I got a program here that actually helps people to learn what to do in order to be an owner. Because I, we went through that before. People ain't necessarily trying to be in your shop forever. So you got to make it okay for them to do this kind of stuff. You gotta make it okay. Okay, so they ain't back there sneaking, coming in trying to learn what they can learn and snatch all up, all the other employees up. So you need to make that okay. So you need to find that out. How many shows or classes do you go to a year? I'm big on education. You probably not gonna work at anything for me if you don't care about going to class, cause that's all I do. I teach, I go to class, I encourage people to go. I'm about knowledge. That's why my company is Knowledge by Nikki. So I wanna know, what it is that you do and see i'm gonna do more than ask you i'm gonna ask you what classes you've been to when were they what you learned i'm gonna really pick your brain in case you're lying uh do you know what that exchange system is we talked about that on a facebook live i'll do another facebook live on that another day okay what are your scheduled work hours you need to know people gonna be up in there all day do you work on sunday do you work on mondays what 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 days are you actually planning on being here i need to know that okay what are the average amount of uh what are the average amount of hours you work a day? Is this an all-nighter? This somebody that wants to be here all night, all day, you let them know. We we don't do that here. We leave and the doors stay locked. Even if you got a key, you don't come back up in here after 12 o'clock. Uh what, if any, are some of the past community projects you participated in? You just want to know how much do they reach beyond their salons. Let me tell you something I learned about people that do community projects. It's not just about the community project aspect that I would inquire about. People that are willing to do stuff beyond a salon also don't have a problem 
hustling for customers. They don't mind going beyond their chair to get what they need because people who won't do anything outside of their chair, they'll just sit in their chair and squabble about how they ain't got no customers and they ain't willing to do nothing to get no customers. They ain't passing out no cars. They're not willing to go outside that chair to do anything. Community projects, market for themselves, anything. So this starts to give me an idea about the type of person they are and what are they willing to do. What are the age ranges of their clients? You need to know, do they have a bunch of kids? Do they have a bunch of, hey, on this side. Do they have a bunch of kids? Do they have a bunch of teenagers? You need to know that. Okay, look, this is the guy that helps me out with my tiles. Is Sharon in there? Good morning. Yeah, okay, now. tell her I'll be right back. Okay, just just go ahead and do them. I'll be back. Yeah, okay, right. thank you. Right. I'm dropping off tiles today, guys. Okay, so this is something you also need to ask them. What are the ranges of their clients so you know if they got teenagers, guess what's going to happen? Teenagers travel in packs. That means you're going to have to have, you're going to have a bunch of little random kids all over the place. Teenagers also, I don't know what it is. When you're doing a teenager's hair, they like to stand up around their friends and talk so they get in the way. You may have to have more waiting chairs depending on the people they market to. These are things you need to know. How do you keep your appointments? Do they keep them style seat? Do they keep them on their computer, their phone? What do they need to do so you can make sure you got enough room for them to set stuff down if they keep them on iPads, computers, whatever, because people keep their appointments how, however. What do you consider comfortable attire? Do you come to work in scrubs? Do you come to work in real clothes? I need to know because this ain't a scrub type of joint. We actually wear real clothes here. We look like we come to work here. Okay, these are things you need to ask people so that you can get a better understanding if they fit your culture. Obviously, how many years have you been in the business? There is something, I don't care what they've learned, there's something that comes with people that have been in this game a little bit longer. Okay, so you need to know, am I looking for the babies that are trying to figure it out? Am I looking to teach them, build them, cultivate them? Or am I looking for the older ones that could be a little more seasoned, but sometimes you don't want them too seasoned because they don't shift gears as quick. So you need to understand age range and generational differences and, and, and what you may have to encounter based off of this type of uh, a worker. And then this is just some of the questions. I, it's too many in here to ask. What do you hope to gain from your employment here? What are you looking for? What are you looking for this salon to do for you? What are you looking for? For those new ones that came in, I need you all to do the same thing. Hit share on your, on your phones. If you think other people need this, hit share and share this video with all of the groups that you're in that you think needs this information, which is everybody in the salon industry. But this is something that you have to, you have to ask them, what is it that you came here for? Are you just looking for a chair? Are you looking for a family to connect to? Are you looking for someone to help you to learn how to teach, to learn how to do? What is it? In order also to get the right people in your space, you not only have to establish a solid, unreprimandable or, or undisputable culture, but you also have to make sure that you ask the right questions. If you do not ask the right questions, you will not get the right people. So I say to every leader, to every salon owner, which is how I start all my Facebook lives, you have to first start the culture with what you need and establish it and be authentic in it. And then is where you start getting people that you can actually find that fit into your culture. Now, I know we got to pay bills. I get it. I know we got to pay bills and I know we got to do a whole lot of stuff and we need some bodies in here to help pay this rent. And, but I'm telling you, if you only bring people in to pay rent, you're going to constantly go through these cycles of highs and lows, employees, no employees. That's why I think it's so important. And I've had this Facebook talk. You need to have revenue streams, other revenue streams in your business that are not just about service. That's what it's about, guys. It cannot be just about service or you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. So you have to have other revenue streams that keep you from being a hostage to people who do not fit your culture. Okay? Are y'all with me? All right, guys. I got a whole lot more good stuff. You know, this is my last Facebook Live for the week. For those of you all that want to learn more, Guess what, guys? My fake my uh, website will be fully live on Saturday night, actually. 
It'll have everything for the Salon Owners Conference. It'll have everything for the Color, color My Business Crazy. It'll have all the classes. It'll have everything. You'll be able to do the payment arrangements. You'll be able to do everything. So when you get off of work Saturday, check your check. Go online, check it out. Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. I finally got it all updated. With 1K, you'll be able to do everything there. If you have more questions, you'll be able to go in the comment area and you'll be able to just send me questions. They come to me directly. They'll come to my email. I'll call you. Make sure you put your phone number in there. I'll call you, text you, whatever I need to do to get answers to your questions. But this is something we gotta do, guys. I don't wanna hear us just blaming it, owners just blaming it on workers because a lot of it is people don't know what to expect they don't know what they're getting into they don't really know what it is that you need from them they don't know so we got to make it clear this is what this is how this works here and either you fit or you don't and we ain't got to fall out about it it is i have learned as i've gotten older it is perfectly okay for me not to be all things to all people it really is y'all I don't have to connect with everybody. I, this is what I say. And I could be overreaching to say this, but I believe this. If there is a person in this world that gets along with everybody, that everybody likes you, that everybody connects with you, if that person exists, it's because they're a chameleon. That means that the only way everybody is going to agree with you, going to like you, going to want to be a part of what you're doing is because you are you are changing what you do to suit the people around you. It, that means you being a chameleon. That means you walk into an atmosphere and instead of you sticking and staying flat-footed on what you believe in, you blend it in. That's the only way everybody going to like you. You Because if you stay true to you, you go run into some people who don't agree with that. It's natural. So if you are a truly authentic, authentic person, I'm getting tongue tied today, authentic person, you are going to run into not, not necessarily being well connected with some people. And that's okay. That is absolutely okay. I tell people in a minute, we look, I don't care anymore about being liked. I only care about being respected. That's the only thing I do require. We don't have to, we don't have to be in love with each other. We ain't got to go to lunch. We ain't got to do none of that. But I will always respect you and I will always demand respect. And if it gets to a point that we're in a business together and we just don't fit, I have no problem saying that you ain't for me and I ain't for you. And it's okay. It is absolutely okay. And you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with doing what in the essentials book that some of you all got. He said, you got to create space. You got to create space in your life, space to think, space to free up so that the real people you need can come in. You create space. That's my new term. I've been using it ever since I read that book, Essentialism. Some of you all have already bought it. It's an excellent book by Gregory McKeon. It's called Essentialism. It's a new lifestyle. It's a new way to go about living life. Okay, so this is something that's important, guys. <clears throat> I just want us to get it. That's all I want. Okay, guys, I got to go, guys. I, I'm hoping I'm supposed to be here at, 9, at 10 and not 9.30 because I like being early. But I'm on my way to some wealth building uh, classes and information. And uh, what I get, I happily pass along to you. Again, if any of you all want more information, I do salon assessments. I got salon, a salon owners conference. I got color my business crazy. Uh, I got a whole lot of stuff going on, guys. I I, can't, I had to look at the calendar day by day and like, what do I have going on? So if you all are interested in any of this, please, please direct message me. Or you can go to my designated text line, which is 708-798-7900. And this Saturday, my website will be all the way live. Praise God. Finally, okay, it's been sitting in limbo for a minute, but it'll have everything on it for you to, to buy, to, to read, to do whatever, okay? So uh, I just love doing this. I thank you all for listening to me. Again, this is Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. Website is knowledgebynikki1k.com, okay? And if you need to email me something, that's also knowledgebynikki at gmail. You also can put it in the comment box on the website. If you are interested in any conferences, you can let me know now. I can send you the flyers. I can send you payment arrangements. A lot of you all have done that already. I can do it now. The conference is over half sold now. So it ain't a lot more space in there. And I'm, I'm cutting it off because I want to keep it intimate. So the owners can actually get what they need. And let me tell you what I've been commissioned to do. 
I finally agreed and decided that I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do it till later this year. I have a coaching program called Stretch, and I closed the membership because I wanted to make sure I could handle who was in it. And I have been asked by many of you all, okay, you only said you open it to salon owners, but I want to open a salon. Is there any way that you can help me? So I actually thought about it for a while, and I realized that outside, you know, my love is for fixing what's broken. That's that's a natural love I have for taking something, polishing it up, fixing me, fixing it, and, 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 and trying to get it back whole again or make it whole if it never was. But I would like to catch some of you all, if you all are interested, and I'm talking about, I ain't playing now, I'm, I'm not talking about folks want to open a salon in five years. If you are interested in opening a salon within the next 12 years, months i'm talking to you i decided to start a movement or start a coaching movement for people because i mean i know how to tell you how to do it so i'm gonna tell you how to do it right the first time we're gonna help you get it right the first time and i am gonna start it won't be until late september i'm gonna start another coaching group for salon owners who want to open a salon within the next 12 months and just want to do it right so if that is something you're interested in, because I've been telling people who want to get in my coaching group, no, nah, because you got to be a salon owner. But I realize I, my gifts expand beyond just fixing stuff. I actually know how to help you establish it so you can do it right the first time. Not mess up a bunch of money, not make a lot of the mistakes that me and a lot of other people have made. Let's get it right in the door. How about that? That sound good? So if you all are interested in that, I'm getting all the material together. It will it will launch in September. And guess what, guys? If you all join this movement, you will get to come to the Salon Owners Conference this year as part of your membership. Now, it won't be till September because I got to get everything together. So if you all are also interested in that, direct message me right now and say, look, send me the stuff when you get ready to do it. I won't tell you what it's going to be called yet. It took me a minute to come up with a name because the other group is called Stretch. So this group will be called something else because we ain't stretching. We starting it off. But I want you to start it off right. I want you, I'm like the mama that wants the kids to not have to go through what she went through. That is what I want to be able to do for you. So this will launch and I think it's a uh, third week in September. So this is something, If and, and now look. I ain't saying you got to do it in 12 months, but that is what I'm looking for. I'm putting that addendum out. I am looking for people who are ready to do it. They're ready. Not ready five years from now because all kind of stuff will change. I'm talking about people that within the next 12 months, you are ready to open a salon. 12 months from September. So I'll, I'll put this out. That means you will be ready to be open no later, I'll stretch it a little past September to September 2020. You need to be ready to open by January 2020, and I will be able to help you do that. Okay? So direct message me, or somebody put my uh, designated text number up for me, 708-798-7900. That is the designated text line that you also can send me things directly. So Vera, put that up if you're still listening, Vera. Uh, that's what we that's what I got going on guys, but we got to establish a good blueprint a good platform a good salon culture We have to do all this stuff guys if we don't do it Then you can't really get mad at people when they don't really know what you're doing You haven't really explained to them what you're about so you get whatever you get Okay, somebody put that number up for me, please 708-798 7900 somebody put that number up that is the direct text line that you can send me whatever question you got i can answer it if it's something that absolutely needs to be addressed verbally i will call you okay so again 708-798-7900 and i'm getting ready to sign off my facebook live thank you all so much i love you all i'll see you monday you know we only do monday uh through wednesday now so i'll see you monday have a great week. Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. Go online this week. Knowledgebynikki.com. Everything will be there Saturday evening when you get off of work or Sunday morning when you wake up before church. Go on the website. Check it out. Peace out. I'll see you Monday.